Hello, everyone. Welcome to another parenting session. My name is Jerry Prince. I work with the East Initiative, and we're going to be jumping into networking today. Uh, if you're just now joining us, welcome aboard. Uh, I have posted a little note in the chat. We're going to get to it in our slideshow here in just a little bit. Uh, so this parent support program is, is hosted by EAST and our overall goal is to help fill in some of the gaps and, and, and give you a little bit more assurance and a, and a little bit more confidence in some of the things that you're possibly uh, working around in helping your student in this virtual world that everyone has been uh, forced into. I'm Senior Director of Program Services at the EAST Initiative and I have had so many opportunities to be involved in so many different things and I know a little bit about a lot of stuff. Um, and so networking is one of those things over the years that I've got to tinker in. And my grandfather said, a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. It can be a dangerous thing, and I've proven that, but that's not necessarily the case with what we're talking about uh, today. If you are unfamiliar with EAST uh, and you have chosen to think in, thank you very much. We are a 501c3 nonprofit based out of Little Rock offices that are, are snowed in, are out on Highway 10. Uh, we have programs in uh, K-12 schools and even, uh, even uh, uh, a couple of uh, community colleges around the state and surrounding states. We put industry level technology into the hands of students and let them build skills through working on real projects in their community. And we're happy to have this opportunity to step outside of that classroom and come into your homes, into your space, and share a little bit of the fun that we sometimes have working with students and share a little bit of the knowledge that we, uh, that we have picked up over the years. Here's where we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna have a little bit of fun today. We're gonna talk a little bit about a whole lot of stuff. And, and I'm gonna borrow something that I learned from my father-in-law. Uh, we were traveling a good while back and we stopped at a place and he said, well, you just tell me, you know a lot, you know a lot about technology. I went, no, no. He said, can you tell me what Weefy is? I went, Weefy, Weefy. And there was a sign. He said, the sign right there, what is Weefy? It's Wi-Fi. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, if you don't know the difference between Weefy or Wi-Fi or what is a modem or who is it or any of that stuff, that's okay. We're going to jump in and try to help give you a little bit of a foundation uh, to some of these terms and a little bit of what's going on. And then you can dig a little bit deeper. There's no way in just a few minutes that we can go deep in all of these things. And my limited capacity and knowledge is not going to enable us to go deep uh, anyway. So uh, there is a link and this is going to be our map. This is going to be our guide. Uh, and this link will remain live after this. It's simply a, a, a working document from Google Docs. If you will go there, um, it, it's basically, we're going to kind of click and go through this. It's eastlink.me, uh, EU, and that is case sensitive networking. Eastlink.me, EU networking. Uh, and we're going to leave this in the chat as, as well. And that is going to be our guide as we move along. And there is uh, our document. Let me reshare that. There is our document. Try again. Uh, let me be sure I am sharing. I stopped share. Let me be sure. Let me go back and try one more time. There we go. Um, and what is a network? Now, all of these links, we're not going to click on all of these links, um, but these links uh, will take you to various places. And I'm going to tell you, uh, in case we don't get all of the way down, I'm going to tell you there's a link toward the very bottom that I just found earlier today. Uh, and it's called Java Point under recommended reading. This website is awesome. And we possibly would have used it for our entire uh, talk today, but we're going to go ahead and follow the follow the path that I have gone. But this, this recommended reading at the very bottom has a wealth of resources on top of what it is that we are, are talking about. So what is a network? Uh, a number of places, Xfinity has, which is Comcast, uh, has a lot of good resources because they're into this networking thing. And you can go to that link and, and you can read and comprehend a little bit more about it. But, but networking is basically uh, a series of devices that are linked and they have capability of communicating. Um, another way of looking at networking is our interstate system, the highways, and that this network of roads enables us to quickly and efficiently go from one place to the other. And there's actually 
uh, quite a bit of, of characteristics between an interstate and that highway system and actually the networking that we are, are talking about. So uh, a networking is basically a, a series of devices. Uh, you probably have something along this line and this connects to a network, whether it's Verizon, whether it's AT&T or Cricket or uh, whatever it might be, it connects to a network. And when, we, when it connects to that network, it then is connected to lots of other devices that, uh, that we now can access using those uh, resources. But we're talking mainly about a home network. And here it says connecting to the internet. And that's really what we are focusing on is connecting to all of those resources that are out there. And it actually goes in and talks about some of those components that are necessary. And again, since it is Comcast, Xfinity, they're talking about internet services that come through them. But then they get into a little bit of some of the tools that are necessary uh, in order to connect. So now we're going to be focusing on this network that's not just devices in our home, but we really are, are focusing on these devices connecting to that outside world and all of the wealth of resources that are available to us, including Zoom and, and sessions like this via that internet. And it tells us down here that number one, we need a modem. The modem connects to the internet and a router that connects to devices to each other and to the internet, and then it says, or a gateway. And then the third bullet point is computer or other devices. And so we're gonna talk a little bit more about these. There's actually a pretty good diagram uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's on one of those links. I think it's under the components link. There is a diagram and uh, this helps us out quite a bit. It does leave out that modem. We're gonna come back and talk about that, but this is a pretty good illustration of what a network is and that we have devices that are connected to one another, whether it be via a wire or it be radio waves, wireless, but they are connected in some shape, form or fashion. We wanna kind of jump ahead because we're gonna start seeing a number of things uh, that deal with speed. And let's go ahead and kind of fast forward a little bit so we've got that foundation uh, beneath us. When we're talking about networking, you frequently, frequently will see uh, specifications and statistics and information related to speed. And, and this is, is crucial uh, to, to understanding the various options. Uh, if you go to uh, AT&T or you go to Comcast, whatever your internet provider is, they may have different levels of service and different prices. And you're going to see the faster uh, internet that you have, the more expensive that it is. And we see an example here. I think this actually is from New England. This isn't local, but it's a pretty graphic, so I borrowed it. Um, in that you see here 25 Mbps, and then it's 100, then it's 200 and 300, and it's faster. And we go back to that idea of an interstate. Uh, interstates were built to, to allow you to rapidly or quickly and safely navigate through a state to another. There are other side roads that allow you to get to the same place, but it's going to be slower. And so speed, when it comes to networking and the internet, is a, a crucial factor. And that little component is in practically everything that we look at. So we wanted to kind of mention this up front, that the speed you have uh, is, is, very, uh, is, is, is that common thread as we move through the various, uh, through the various things. So we talked a minute ago about a modem and a router. What is, uh, what is the actual uh, difference? Uh, when we look at the networking list, that modem versus router, it actually is going to get in and explain the difference to us. So uh, we're gonna talk with Comcast and Comcast is the cable company. I have this wire that comes in uh, that is a coax wire. It's that round wire uh, and, and it's got threads on it that I normally would hook to my TV or to my cable box. Well, we have to 
uh, connect this to a device that is, is going to take the signal that is there and turn it into a signal that my network can understand. So it, it is going to convert that, uh, if you will. And so that modem is actually what is going to enable that uh, to, to, to do that. So it's going to connect to a very special device that translates or converts that signal from that round cable into a digital signal that my network can then uh, understand and can, uh, and can use. Here's an example of that. We see here on the left-hand side, a box that's coming in from the outside. There's that coax, that white, usually kind of stiff round uh, wire uh, that connects with a, a screw to the to the back of a TV or to my uh, my cable box. Well, we see here it actually is connected to that black square box, and that is the modem. And from that modem, it actually has a network wire that is connecting to the guy that's got the little device that's got looks like rabbit ears on it, and that's going to be my router. And so the modem converts that signal into something that I can use. And now that I have a, a device that I can connect to my network and, and, and go from there. So that router now is, is going to act as that interface to my network. And I guess we could even think that the router is creating that network. We're gonna spend quite a bit of time talking about what all this router does. I have a spare one here um, and you see the little rabbit ears and all of that and in the very back of it, you see uh, a plug-in that's blue and then four ports that are over here. So I'm gonna plug up my, uh, my modem and from the modem, I'm gonna get a wire and plug it in into the back of this. And this guy is gonna create that network for, uh, for all of my devices. The yellow devices actually allow me to plug up wired other things just close to my TV or something along that line. The antenna is gonna give me that uh, that wireless signal. So this device is acting as that connector to the modem that is providing all of these services uh, for me. So uh, they actually make, and I have a link there, they actually make modems that also have the router built in it, which is fine. Uh, one of the challenges there, if one of them goes down, everything goes down, but you certainly can do that. You do spend a little bit more money and you are putting all of your eggs in that one basket. Also, places like Comcast will rent you a modem and you can do that. Um, I recommend purchasing it because just a few months you actually can ha have enough saved to pay for that modem, but that's, that's totally, totally up, uh, up to you. A lot of links there with a lot of information. Um, let's go ahead and jump down to router time. Router, no, a, let's hold on. We got a couple of minutes here. Let's take a look at modems real quick. Uh, this is one of the modem examples. I say uh, router example, I'm sorry. Router example and another is the link. So let's talk a little bit about some of the specs that are here. Again, we're not going very deep and you click on this and that's, oh my goodness, it's $200. Um, it mentions a couple of things that, that, that we can talk a little bit of. Number one, it says it is a tri-band. That means that it is sending out a signal from the older technology, some of the older things you may have in the house that's a little bit slower to the more advanced and the newest technology. And so it's capable of putting out signals on different frequencies. And, and the more bands, I guess, the merrier. And you can read about that uh, toward the bottom. As we go down to the specs, uh, here are those uh, different bands that it sends that signal out on. Uh, a has been around a fairly long time and N is a little bit more, a little bit more recent. Um, we talked about speed a moment ago um, and here we begin to get a little bit of an idea of that speed. Notice it says here, wireless data rates up to six gigabits. We've got giga and giga, giga then goes down to mega, <laughs> playing along here. And giga is a thousand mega, I, I think, if I'm doing all of my converting uh, as, as we speak. That's fast. That is exceptionally fast. And so what this is saying is, is that saying you're going to get six gigabit speed? Not necessarily. 
you're going to get six gigabit speed on your network. That doesn't mean you're going to have super fast internet unless you go back out and you're paying for super fast internet. Does that make sense? So here, if I am buying the 25 megabit download, that's the fastest I'm going to be able to get from Comcast. Even though my router is going to be a thousand more than that times faster, see where that's coming into play. So my download speed is going to be determined by the package that I have purchased from my internet provider and also what that modem is capable of doing. You will see that in the specs of the modem. And the router specs is actually what's going to be transferring on my network. So we got to be very careful there when we look at these and go, wow, I can have six gigabit internet and you plug that up to a 25, you're, you're not gonna get super crazy speeds. Um, that's, that's, the way those, that's, the way those, uh, that's the way those work. Here's another example. This is a, a TP-Link. It's a little cheaper, it's $69, but it has four antennas as well. So you can't really uh, uh, kind of judge a book by its cover. Uh, this is uh, a dual band where the other was three band and it says Wi-Fi 6 up to 1.5. So the other was six. This one's 1 1.5 and 1 1.5 is less than six. So it is going to be slower on your network, but still that is incredibly fast speeds uh, uh, depending on what it is that you're doing inside and on, on your network. So uh, a little bit, and here's something else, we're not getting much into, into this, but this is some newer technologies. It's been around for a while and it's called a mesh network in that it has uh, multiple modules. Here it is a two pack uh, and that uh, it creates a mesh to where these devices talk to one another and it shows up as one signal in your house um, to where uh, routers in that level of a technology work in a slightly different perspective. If you have a big house or you have very weak areas, uh, look into the home mesh and we've got a link to that as, as well. Let's talk a little bit more about routers. I have a link called Router Time and uh, we're gonna go there. And what this is going to open up is it's going to give us an online demonstration and complete access to an interface of a router. And you're like, whoa, there are a lot of buttons and there are a lot of places that I can mess something up. Yes, there is. <laughs> However, it is relatively user friendly and there is even a quick internet set up at the very top. And so again, as it says at the top, this is a simulator only for demonstration purposes. You can play around and you can click all the buttons, all the tabs and get a little bit of an idea of what all is here. But when you purchase a router, this is going to be similar to what you do in setting it up. It actually will jump into the quick internet setup when you plug it up. And this is very user friendly and we can walk through it. And my option here is create a new network. And I, I read and follow the directions, which I sometimes have trouble doing that. Assign a unique name or SID, a service set identifier to help identify your wireless network. When you look for a wireless network on your device and the names of the wireless network appear, that's where you name it. What do you want your network name to be? You can leave it as the default or you can have a little fun with it. You can call it anything that, that you want. Uh, Wally's network, or you may cause sometimes be traveling and say, don't even think about joining this network. You can, you can call it anything that you want. And here is that security key, that password that you put on that. So for someone to join your network, they need to know what the name is and they also need that password or that security uh, key. Uh, and we click next, even though I didn't fill in the blank. And it's now telling me I have some options and it's even educating me about these various options. So this particular company is not just throwing us to the wild, assuming we're going to make all of the right decisions. 
Um, and I like that. I like that. Uh, it's also a company that does a, a lot in the networking area and they do a pretty good job of, of, of helping us out and understanding what's going on. So here I go back to that, that main screen and it's showing me what is taking place. Number one, the internet status, it says is connected. Well, I might need to know that. If I'm troubleshooting and I'm having uh, problems inside my network, inside my home, um, this is going to tell me that that's not the problem, that the router, this guy, is connected through the modem to the internet, and the internet is connected to this point. So now I can't blame Comcast. It's telling me it's working up to this point. We're going to talk about IPs here in just a little bit. Down here, we're kind of following that line and it's showing me that security level. That's actually what we set up a moment ago, uh, giving it that user, that, that SID and that password. And down here are clients that are connected uh, to it. I click on the right hand side and all sorts of stuff we can look at here. I mean, this is actually kind of like a computer. It has a CPU, it has memory, it has networking and all of that stuff. It actually shows me how hard it's working. If I click on the uh, status light over here, but again, this is a, uh, is a demo. Uh, I'm looking to see, is there anything else we really want to jump in and play with at this point? I don't think so. I think we will come back to this. Uh, there is guest network and that you can create a separate network. Again, we, we created that SID a moment ago, but we can create a guest network. If you're throwing a party or something and people are coming over and rather than uh, giving them your, uh, your, your SID and your, your passcode to get on your, your main network, you can actually create a guest network and that separates them and all that they do from everything else uh, that is going on. And here it's kind of walking you through uh, that process. Now we talked a minute ago here about those different bands. Remember I was talking about dual band and tri-band just a minute ago? And that's actually what's happening here. This is the frequency that those bands are sending out that signal. 2.4 has been around for a while. Uh, five has been around, is the, is the newer, is the faster. Um, and so it's basically giving us those three options of where do you want to establish this? So we're seeing this uh, kind of reappear as we jump as we jump into it. All right, so let's get into a, a little bit more about what is going on and, and how this operates. There is, um, I did not want to click that button. I wanted to go back to the, uh, to the main one here. We see a number up here and it says WAN IP. Well, WAN is that blue, is that blue connection that's going to my modem. And IP is internet protocol. Let's think telephone number for just a little bit. Back when we had those telephones hanging on the wall, each of those devices had a unique number. And I could pick up that device and punch that a series of numbers and I can talk to someone across the street or around the world. Those unique numbers allowed us to communicate. That's what an IP number is. So that IP number, there are two different types of numbers, more than that, but we're going to say two different types of numbers. There's a public and a private. What's the different? Well, let's think public. Public is a number that you can access from anywhere, like Google. Google has a number. And for us to be able to access their network, it has to be visible, not just behind a router. So it has to be visible. It has to be public accessible. When we go to google.com, we're actually going to an IP number that they have, uh, that, they have that is visible outside of those networks, if that makes any sense at all. Kind of like the telephone. But we used to have little two-way radios and those two-way radios shared frequencies. And you may have bought a couple of two-way radios and had a little bit of fun, but someone else down the, uh, down the street, down the road may also have two-way radios and now you can hear them talking. Well, that's kind of what a private IP is. 
is that we're on this side of the network and those numbers cannot be easily accessed from the outside. And we're just gonna say they can't be accessed from the outside. It takes quite a bit of work to do. So we see 192.168.66.46. That 192.168 is common uh, in that basically I cannot access this from the other side of that router. I hope that makes just a little bit of sense. This IP number is actually fairly important to us in that all of our devices, if I look down here, all of my devices, and again, this is just a demo, have a unique number. This uh, demo network has a Samsung device and there is its unique number. Uh, uh, an HP, looks like maybe a laptop. There is its unique number and they're all coming off of this 192168. That set of 192168 is actually part of the setup in that router. You can go and tweak those numbers. Uh, it's actually down here under, uh, under LAN. Uh, so each device that we have will have a unique number that is assigned to it. Think um, telephone number. Uh, it is a unique number uh, that is assigned to it from Mr. Rabbit Ears. Now there's another number on the side, just in case you come across it, we're looking at it here, and that is a MAC address. It's not going to be on the test. Don't have to worry about it. But MAC address is a hard-coded number. It is a number that is unique to that device that is hard-coded to it. You cannot change it. That it is, is its unique identifier in the world. No other device has that unique address. Sometimes that comes into play, but you may see that. Be aware that that's what that is. That is a hard-coded series of numbers and letters that identifies that device to where the IP address can change. Uh, we see some other things here. Notice there's transfer rate, speed, um, and also it's giving us what channel it's on or rather what frequency it's on. This one is on 2.4 um, and we see the signal. So that's giving us a little bit of information about our various uh, devices. Let's talk about IP for just a little bit. This is kind of going down a rabbit hole, but when we start that troubleshooting, um, we, we need to get a little bit of an understanding of that connection. We've already talked about public and private. If, if you look under 192.168.1.1 on our cheat sheet, we've already talked a little bit about that and you can go just a little bit deeper. It's also interesting uh, to read about the older version, version four numbers versus version six numbers. Right now, as we're looking at on the screen, it's a series of four sets of numbers, um, but we're running out of those, kind of like telephone numbers. We're running out of those. And so now version six adds another dot and another set of numbers. And that just opens up a massive additional set of IP numbers. That's the difference between four and six uh, in a nutshell. We've already talked about um, IP versus uh, MAC address. We're not going to talk about subnet. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, speed test. I talked about IP, uh, but I think we're going to move along. Uh, let's look at speed. How fast is my internet? I can go to speedtest.net, uh, or actually I can just Google speed test, and there are several that come up, and this will test my speed. All right, pop quiz. So about everything that we have talked about so far, what just happened? I typed in a web address. I could have Googled, but I knew this web address. I typed in a web address, speedtest.net. What happened? When I hit enter, it sent a signal through my computer, through my network in my house, to my rabbit ears, to my modem, it went out the blue, I'm sorry, to my rabbit ears, to my router. It went through the blue to my modem, and my modem connected me to the Comcast internet. Make sense? My computer through my network to the router, and it sent it through that modem to the internet. And speedtest.net actually is an IP number. 
an IP number, except we can't remember all of those numbers. There is a service, and I think I've got it linked there somewhere, called DNS, um, and that actually translates that name to a number. So it's the reason we spend a little bit of time on that IP number. Um, so speedtest.net is a computer that is running a program that someone has created some images and some uh, pages and published it as a web page and allowed people from the outside to access it. So that is a public IP number. <laughs> I understand and I agree with you. Notice down here, it's identifying me as on the Xfinity network and there is an IP number. Now, wait a minute. I thought you said you were 192.168 something something. I am in my house on this side of my router, but my modem is what is connected to the internet. And that is the number that is on my modem. Make a little bit of sense. It's a hardware device that is connected to the internet and Xfinity Comcast is the one that is assigned that number to me. All right, so now the big button there is go. And what I'm wanting to do is to do a speed test. And so it's gonna do a couple of things. We see some stats here at the top, ping, download and upload. It is connecting. And I think I pay for, I think I pay for 200, uh, megabits. I think it's the plan that I am on. It may be 300. I don't remember. They off, they gave me an offer a while back, but I'm pegging out. If I'm paying for 200, I'm getting better than that. I'm happy. If I'm paying for 300, I'm getting a little bit less than that, but that's, that's not highly uh, uncommon. We'll talk about ping in just a little bit. So my download speed is 232. So again, if I paid a lot of money for that six gigabit router, I'm actually only getting internet speed of 232. And again, giga is a thousand. So I'm buying 6,000 on the router, but I'm only getting 232. So that may have been a little bit of an overinvestment on my part. Download speed. Upload speed is only 22. Why is upload considerably less than download? What is download? Download is when I'm going somewhere and I'm pulling information from speed test to my computer. It's pulling it down. We don't do a lot of upload unless we're uploading something, some pictures or some documents to Google or something. So upload typically is a lot less. In this instance, I simply ask speedtest.net, very tiny little thing that I sent out and it sent down a lot more information. So our upload speed is typically less than our download speed. If you run this at work, depending on how you're set up, you may see that that upload and download is exactly the same because typically in businesses, uh, we do about, depending on what you're doing, we may do as much uploading as we do uh, downloading. Ping is an interesting tool uh, in that it, it, is a, it is a very tiny tool that sends out a hello, are you there is my interpretation of that. And this is how long did it take for this server, this computer to respond uh, in 14 milliseconds that's kind of that's kind of fast. But if you're you're running into some slow problems uh, on the internet and you're trying to figure out is it my computer, is it my router, is it my network, or is it somewhere out there? This will give us a little bit of an indication of how bogged down things, uh, how things might be. Uh, there's some pretty good resources here. Uh, that's what these folks do. There's some pretty good resources here, so don't hesitate to to jump around. Um, we talked about DNS just a moment ago. Do I really need to know about that? That's a pretty good link that explains. It's simply a translation. I mean, I could pick up my phone and, and in my phone, I have contacts and I have a name. And when I push the name, it automatically calls the number. I don't remember their number. And it's kind of the same thing. When I, I, I pull up google.com, uh, it's going to translate google.com into whatever that IP number is. And that's what at, at the root, that's what uh, DNS does. As far as a couple of tool belts, uh, Bellarc Advisor is a free tool that you can download. It takes a little bit to scan and it's going to give you a wealth 
of information about everything. Here's an example from that I ran on this particular computer. It's telling me all sorts of things about my computer, the processor that is there, all of the hard drives that I have, the memory that I have, the printers that I have uh, installed on it, uh, the users. Well, we're not talking about that, Jerry. Well, you know, we're talking network. Uh, and if I scroll down, it actually is giving me some information about my network as well. These are all the devices that I have connected to my network. I have a number of things like uh, the Echo Dots. Uh, I have a, a ring camera. I've got a couple of Echo B thermostats. All of these things are on my network. And looky, looky, looky. There are the IP numbers of those. And these particular devices, there is the MAC address. Not that I would ever want to know, but there is the MAC address. And even in some instances, it is identifying this as my router. The little guy with rabbit ears, that's not this one. It's a different one that's doing all of that work. It's actually identifying it uh, for me. So this again is Bellarc Advisor. It's pretty cool. Uh, there is one called Bitdefender Home Scanner. Uh, and I can't make this any larger, so we'll just leave it the way it is. It will scan your network and it actually does, uh, does a little bit more risk scanning. Uh, Bitdefender does antivirus and some other things along that line. It actually lets you know, are these devices up to date? That's the computer that I am on right now. And there's one of my thermostats. Uh, there's the, uh, there's the uh, Netgear device that I actually have this computer and it says potentially at risk. I might need to look into that. That typically is something that should concern me. Uh, and here are some of the other devices. I've got a garage door. I've got a sprinkler system. Oh, everything that's on my network, Bitdefender Home Scanner will uh, we'll look out and find it. And again, it is free, but you do have to create an account. They are gonna get your email address. Uh, at the end of the day. Uh, time kind of marches on uh, when to upgrade and when to update. Let's talk just a little bit about that. Um, when, when to upgrade and when to update. Uh, we've already talked a little bit about the speeds and just buying a new router and going through all of that process to plug it up may not necessarily give you an increase on your internet speed. That may be uh, what you have to talk to your cable company or your internet provider for. Um, if you have students at home and you constantly are getting that little swirl, loading, loading, that buffering, um, you're, you're, you're maxed out on what you're capable of doing. So you can go back and look at that package that you have, see what that number is, and then do some comparison. If possible, you might need to talk to your internet provider and get a little more speed. You may need a, a little wider uh, roadway on that interstate. Um, so there are some options. Um, it's not bad to have a backup. Uh, this isn't that old, but I updated my router uh, not too long ago and I purchased myself a mesh system, found a bargain, uh, and, and, but I didn't throw this away. Uh, this is my backup plan. Should my router go down, if my router goes down, I'm dead in the water. I, I don't have a, I don't have a network. I, I, I you know, and uh, so I've got a backup and it's going to take a little bit to plug it up and get things going. And if my Echo B is not on it and my sprinkler is not on it, when, but if I just need access to the internet in order to do my job and do things like this training, I've got a backup. So it's not bad to have a backup and the backup doesn't have to be one of those $300 numbers either. So if you do upgrade something, I would encourage you if it's working, Keep it and the power adapter. Keep all of it. Uh, keep all of it handy. Um, back up your configuration. I also say, if all else fails, reboot. Reboot your router. Reboot your modem. It takes just a little bit for everything to come online. Uh, start with the simplest. I believe is the first thing that I have there. Start with the simplest and and work backwards. Uh, when we go to that, and I think I may have closed it already. Let me go back to that router. Uh, to that router page that we were looking at just a moment ago. Um, and before you get in and start changing things, and don't be afraid to do that, somewhere you will find, and I think it's under administration. Yes, it's under administration under this one. Somewhere you will find a place that says save settings. So everything that you have configured, 
you can download into a tiny little file. And if you mess something up, you can restore it to what you did earlier. Um, I would say a couple of those <laughs> just in case. Uh, so if everything is working the way it needs to, I would save settings twice, two different places, upload one to the internet, understanding if the network's down, you can't get to it. I, I understand all of that. Back it up, back up your settings uh, and you can quickly restore them. Uh, factory default basically is gonna take your, uh, your hardware back to the way it was when you got it out of the box. And then you can go through and set it up again or you can, uh, you, you can upload the settings that you have. Um, firmware upgrade, that might be the thing that I was looking at a moment ago, that it could be that the operating system needs to be upgraded. Um, and in firmware upgrade, this will walk you through that. It's, it's relatively painless as well, but certainly, certainly, certainly be sure uh, that you, you back up. And we talked about having backup tech and also having uh, a lot of cell phones now have unlimited uh, plans. And if you have hotspot, you certainly can use that as well. There's going to be an option that you can turn on the hotspot. And now that signal from your phone is going to show up in your networking and you can connect to it via any device that you have that, that has that wireless capability and you can connect to your phone. It's going to be probably a little bit slower depending on what network you're on, where you are, and, and things along that line, but it will get you connected. What else, what else, what else? One more quick thing, firewall, um, whitelist and blacklist. Occasionally we get people say, is there any way I can block a website? We are on the router and yes, there is. And this particular one, I believe it is going to be under, please let it be under firewall. Yes, it is. There is a thing called a blacklist and a whitelist. You can create a list, and it, it's showing these things uh, here. There's key world, keyword filter and URL filter, but uh, it's going to vary a little bit on the different routers. But basically, you can create a list of websites that you want your student to go to. You want them to go to. That white list will only allow them to go to the sites you specify. Only allow them to go to those sites you specify. Now, you're going to have to jump through a few hoops here because you're going to have to identify their computer. Otherwise, you're filtering out everyone. This is a little bit of work here. But you can identify their computer either by IP or MAC address. See where that comes into play. You can identify their computer by IP or MAC address, and that filter will only apply to that device. A little bit of work here. But a whitelist will only let them go to that location. Blacklist is going to keep them from going to that address. Whitelist only go, blacklist do not go. So that's the difference between a blacklist and a whitelist. And you can do that on your router and you can do that during specific times on some routers. And you can do, uh, you can do that and identify the device that you want that filter to apply to. A uh, little bit of work, it's, it's kind of cool. And you notice there's an enable and a disenable. So if you mess something up, you can very easily go back and turn it off. All right, I think we have covered most everything. Uh, glancing back over the list here, um, some things we did not go that deeply into. Um, we did talk a little bit about, we didn't talk about virtual private networking, you could go read about those. Uh, you're hearing more and more about those. Um, I use one occasionally, especially traveling. Do we have, yeah, we have 30 seconds that I can talk about this. What virtual private network does is it connects you to another network before it goes to the internet. So here I'm going from here to my router, to my modem that goes to Comcast. In a moment ago, in a moment ago we went to speedtest.net. A virtual private network puts another network in between. Virtual private network. So I would go from here to my router, to my modem, to Comcast, to that VPN, then to speed test. So it's putting that additional step, that additional network in between. You can read why you want to want to do that. Basically, that is keeping Comcast from keeping up with where I'm going. 
There's also a higher level of security and some other things uh, that, go, that go into that. It's harder for people to track and see where you're going. Uh, I recommend uh, winscribe.com. Basically, um, uh, they do a very good job and they, they don't get an affiliate fee. You start reading about and people are, are highly recommending XYZ VPN. Often, not always, often they're getting a pretty good kickback. And so if they are giving a very high, high rating for this VPN, and coincidentally, they're also getting a pretty big kickback if you go subscribe to them, that kind of is bothers me just a little bit that perhaps that kickback influenced their rating. Perhaps, perhaps. Uh, Nonetheless, you can go read whether or not uh, you need one. I'm going to point out one more time, javapoint.com, just about every single thing that you would want in one place. A uh, lot of great stuff here. We started and we talked about this. A lot of information on the top. There's computer fundamentals if you want to know, know more about that. Uh, projects, all sorts of stuff that they cover. We're under computer networking. Uh, and again, it does and it can go very deep. Um, but they start off with some of the very basic things and go from there. So networking is not something that you can just quickly jump into, but what we wanted today was introduce you to some of the terminology, introduce you to some of the interfaces, give you a little bit of a sense of what this does, what does this blinky light do, what do those rabbit ears do to give you a little bit better of a sense of what these various components do to, to give you a foundation and to give you some confidence that you can go learn just a little bit more and have a better understanding. Do we need to update? Do we need uh, uh, to, 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 uh, to add something? Uh, or can we increase? Can we make things just a little bit better? It's not that scary. It's almost idiot proof. I, I, have, I have proven that. Um, but uh, a little bit of confidence. And again, a little bit of knowledge in this instance is, is not necessarily uh, a, a dangerous uh, thing. Where we want to end up is, thank you. Uh, there is my email address. We greatly appreciate this opportunity. I love visiting about this stuff. I know it was very much a whirlwind tour and it was a fire hose of information. We shared some resources with you. Uh, and, and if you got nothing out of it other than some of the resources, don't hesitate to go tinker around uh, and, and see what all uh, is there. And, and be a little bit more aware of what all you can do with these devices that you have access to. I'm happy to help out. I didn't scare you too much. Please feel free to email me, jerry at eaststaff.org. A lot more resources uh, that we can point your way and, and, and possibly can help you in some very specific, uh, very specific areas.